going to show you the problem areas on the defective carriages. This one was sold under the name of Fashion Knitter, but it's the same carriage as the Ultimate Sweater Machine. I've got the lid taped down so I can turn it over. I've got a key plate installed, and you can see that with the key plate in, there's barely any lip. So all of this is flush as the needles travel into the working area or even in the non-working and the holding area. They have a clear path with no bumping up into the carriage as they try to go through on either end. So that one is properly made. And the um, Next one is this one, and it's um, actually an Ultimate Sweater Machine carriage, and it's the same thing. It's very well made. There's hardly any lip that the needle butts can hit against as they're trying to travel from either end. But I should have taken a picture of this one before I modified it, but when you turn it over and look at where I did not change anything on it. There's quite a bit of a lip right here. So I ended up grinding out all the area where the needles would travel through that the needles were bumping through on either side. They, they would bump up against the plastic because the plastic was higher up than the edge of the key plate. And so they would hit the plastic first once you got some uh, weight on the front of the knitting, it would cause the butts of the needles to rise up. Um, if there was no weight on the knitting, the uh, carriage traveled fine. But once you put weight on the needles when they were in working position, the butts would pop up and bang up against the uh, carriage and would not go through. So um, after talking to the company and them sending me out several carriages that wouldn't work, um, they told me that they had a defective batch and so I decided to go ahead and just try to fix it and this works pretty well so I'm going to put it on the machine so I can show you how I modified it. If you want to avoid grinding any of the carriage off where it's going to be riding on the rails back here and also these front rails so you can get a wax pencil or a sharpie or something and make sure that this is going to be your safe zone where you're not going to do any grinding on either side of the carriage. So mark this side and also the opposite side and then also mark along here with a little extra support there so that you don't grind off any of this where it starts making that turn outward and also on the other side. So um, what you would do is with the key plate in mark your carriage where you need to grind out on both sides. Mark both sides of your carriage with the key plate in and you'll know exactly where to grind out. So here's another carriage that I only ground out in the the uh, main working area for the needles and the upper the forward working area. I did not grind anywhere for the needles that are being held, but um, it'll pass over the held needles pretty closely without any weight. But once you add a little weight onto the front, that needle's going to be hitting right there. So when you are uh, working on your carriages, you need to take into account the needles that are going to be in hold. And you have to be careful not to uh, grind out any that's going to be riding on this rail. But I've had pretty good success with I haven't had any problem with the needles that are in hold with the carriage that I stopped grinding right here. Once they enter in there, um, they, they tend to follow the path that they need to once the carriage makes its way over the needles. 
So even the carriage that um, has not been ground on could do with a little bit of filing down because um, it's awfully close when I put pressure on that needle. But as I uh, will show in a separate video, these felt pieces that I have in the front of the needles, that helps to keep the needle in an upward position. The purpose of these um, little green plates here on the front of the knitting machine is supposed to lift the needle up as they go by and they weren't really doing their job to to lift the needle high enough to get the butts down and that's what they're supposed to do as it passes over the needle they're supposed to ride up on here and lift up in the front and um, it wasn't um, manufactured correctly so it wasn't doing the job okay I'm knitting with this modified carriage and it knits across smoothly without any hang-ups. Another thing that I like to do is use claw weights and a cast-on rag to uh, cast on with for the machine rather than the cast-on hem that they sell these machines with. I find that it was way too much weight and the edges curled a whole lot more. Even though you can block it out when the piece is finished, the curling was so bad it affected the um, the stitches on the edge. It would curl in like this. So if you keep weights at least on the edges every three or four rows, move those weights up, it keeps that pull from happening. And um, this machine likes a lot of weight, so I put claw weights about every five needles. Um, obviously these are homemade weights and they're about, cost about 60 cents I guess a piece to make if you buy the cheap forks and uh, there's about 30 pennies in there for weight there's another other videos online on how to make those um, because it needs so much weight it would get quite expensive to buy that many claw weights to do the job so I made my own down underneath the needles I laid a piece of worsted yarn. You don't want it too thick. And then I put the needles on top of that yarn before I put my needle retainer bar in. And then I, I snapped the, the retainer bar on top of that. And that also kept the needles from sinking in the front a little bit. So then I got the idea to cut little tiny strips of felt. Not too thick, just the thin felt, the craft felt that you can find at Hobby Lobby. And I put uh, double-sided tape on the backs of them. Now this one I need to redo because I put it in crooked. But um, it was fairly easy to cut the little strips and um, I used my transfer tools to help stick them down inside there. And that also helps to slow these needles down. They don't move around so much but yet they slide freely. And it also keeps them from sinking too far in the front when weight is put on them and that seemed to keep a lot of the uh, the drag against my carriage down. Um, also um, I don't really know how long the, these little felt pieces are going to last but they were easy to put in. I'm sure they'll be easy to take out if I need to. To make the felt strips you need some double-sided tape. This is pretty strong but I believe it would be easy to remove later. And then just tape it down to your felt. Camera's in my way, so it's a little bit hard to do. And then you just trim that off. And then you push it down really good. And then if you want to, you can go ahead and make marks to trim it later about an inch apart actually a tad less than an inch is best we don't want them hanging off the end and then you just mark the the whole strip and then you can cut with your rotary cutter um, a scant quarter. Don't do a full quarter because it won't fit in the slot very easily. Just um, cut little strips out 
and they'll they'll end up looking like this and then you cut them about an inch long or a little bit less than an inch for each slot okay this is how you get the little felt pieces in there this is just a segment of a needle bed that I had taken apart I cut this little strip uh, a little bit less than an inch and you just take the paper backing off of the tape and then you take a pointed tool like your transfer tool and you place it in one of the slots this is why you want it less than a quarter inch wide because it gets really hard it wants to stick to the sides if you cut it exactly a quarter inch so I've got it where I want it so I'm going to take this other tool any kind of pointed tool that will fit and I'm just going to hold that down a little bit while I slip the other tool out and if I want to help this go down straight I can use both tools to maneuver it down and then you smooth it out and press it in and that is what helps the needles in the front of the machine.